Hey everyone, I am so excited today to be with Mark Walsh. He has done so much good for so many teachers, trainers, coaches, including myself. Uh, he created the Embodiment Conference, which hopefully a lot of you have seen and maybe even attended, uh, where there were a thousand teachers, speakers, coaches, facilitators, mentors, and there were 500,000 people signed up for the conference. Um, he has just done, I mean, a lot of you probably watching this have, some of you came from the Embodiment Conference, that's how you discovered me, and, and so many other uh, sort of embodiment teachers and trainers um, were, were discovered through this conference. So Mark, thank you for so much good that you've done for, for the community, and it's great to be here with you. Great, my pleasure. Just sticking this on the Embodiment Unlimited uh, Facebook group so more people see it. Yeah, so, yeah I'm for sure. Doing this thing on ethical marketing right now, and just like you were one of like the first people who came to mind. I was like, I need to talk to George. I've been reviewing your content. I literally just downloaded your podcast, which I <laughs> just heard you got up and running. So I was like, ah, if I'm doing this, I have to talk to George. And we both got the Wear Blue memo. It's nice that we've e coordinated our wardrobes today. So, um, yeah, yeah. Look, yeah, lots of love from Mexico. Yeah. So you're, yeah, you're in Mexico right now. You, uh, usually you're, in, you're in the UK and, uh, other countries sometimes, but, um, so you are launching this, uh, we're going to, we're going to talk about ethical marketing today. You're launching a free, uh, series of trainings called the marketing dojo on ethical marketing. And I want to make sure people know about that up front. There's a link, um, below this video above wherever, um, it's called, <laughs> it's called ethical Well, the link is ethical marketing .coach. I, Can I just share that? Can I just share the screen real quick? I just want to make sure people, I want to make sure people see it. Um, it's ethical marketing .coach, and it's a free series. Um, and I, you know, Mark knows marketing super, super well. I I'm really excited to, for, for the series myself. And um, after this five day free series, you're actually launching a full program on ethical marketing. And I have uh, contributed a very hefty bonus into that program. So I, I think people who study with you on marketing are going to, are going to do well. I mean, you've, you've proven that, you've proven your skills uh, for sure. So, um, so I, I guess this is a conversation and please, please do you know, add whatever you want, but I, I feel like, I feel like um, marketing, I mean, one of the things that I think you really bring to ethical marketing is, well, I mean, you, you have so much experience with embodiment. So, so I, actually, I want to ask you this question. Can you define embodiment first? Because I know a lot of people yes. watching this, some of them, I, everyone's probably heard the word, uh, but not everyone's on the same page with what it means. So what does that mean for you? Yes, yeah, chapter one of my book and every, every interview I get. So it's a fair question. Um, so it's a bit of a buzzword, but I, I view it, you can answer it in a few ways. I view it as the umbrella term for all the body, mind, arts, yoga, uh, meditation, martial arts, improv, comedy, body therapy. So nice umbrella term for all the arts, which look at the body as more than a piece of meat, more than a brain taxi, but as part of who we are. And this is really common sense, I think, to anyone out there. We all get what it's like to be tense when we're stressed. We all get what it's like to see a charismatic leader. We, you know, I was talking about dating with someone yesterday, we're talking about chemistry, that's embodiment. And in the marketing sense, many people I think watching this have read the books or listened to one of your videos or whatever, but then found themselves unable to do it, found themselves stuck. It's like they've read the theory maybe, but they go, okay, what's getting in the way? Um, I think from a marketing point of view, the, the body is you know, under talked about, it's just not part of the conventional mainstream narrative. Uh, and actually, it's the thing that really makes a difference just in, in terms of our, you feel like, like what builds trust, right? Like I think of marketing, I just read this great book, Trust Agents. It's a really nice book on marketing. And, you know, trust is so key to marketing. And what are you conveying? You know, we've, you've talked about lizard brain. I talk about fight or flight. You know, are you doing a marketing which gets people agitated in their bodies or is it actually soothing? You know, it's like, are you sure? Is this a good move for you? I don't you know, our friend Tad Hargraves is very much aligned with this as well. Uh, I just stress the body piece and um, maybe that's the only unique thing I bring, you know, to this is the strength in that area. But actually just the basics of ethical marketing, most of my tribe, my people, my community, um, I see myself as a community builder and leader as much as a business person. 
Uh, I love the embodiment community. You know, I'm in Mexico right now. And, you know, within two days of getting here, I'm like going to a yoga class, meeting people, looking for the conscious dance. That's just what I do. And most of the people who are like my peeps, they're horrible at this. They're just horrible at marketing. And I get why, because they've been told that marketing is sort of, you know, sleazy, pushy, unpleasant. And because of that, they just don't want to do it. And that's understandable. They don't want to do something against their values. Yeah. And then what I learned is like when I taught ethical marketing, authentic marketing, as you might say to people, they were just hugely relieved to be like, oh, wow, there's a way of doing this that isn't scumbaggy, which is, which is in, in keeping with their values. So yeah. that has become, even though I'm an embodiment teacher primarily, that's become a real part of my life's work because it's so empowering yeah. for people yeah. doing good stuff to learn that. I mean, I, I guess this is why you do it too, right, George? Yeah. Know, why do you choose this job and not another? Totally. But, you know, so, so I want to ask you this question. Um, what, well, uh, let, let, me, let, me, let me share, let me, let me reflect back a little bit on what you just said. I, I totally agree. I, I feel like part of the problem is that marketing, as I've been like studying marketing, I see that so much of it is so much of the same stuff. It's like basically you persuade people, you, 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 you get attention by sometimes using visual interruption techniques or um, trying to be clever or, or whatever. You, you, you like work hard at getting people's attention. So that's already a little bit disembodied because you're, 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 you're trying to you know, you're, you're no longer grounded. You're, you're in the grasping position, right? Mm -hmm. And then after you get their attention, you're supposed to try to persuade them to do something with you. And, you know, sometimes people go, George, can you, can you please um, give me your feedback on my, on, on my website or my sales page? And I look at people's sales pages. And I'm like, okay, so what I'm getting from this is that you are writing to somebody who is got their arms folded and you know is totally skeptical about you. Uh, you have to prove your value and your worth. And it's like, what kind of position is that? It's like, like <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's just, George, it's just weird. Like, yeah. like I'll, nearly always when I'm talking to my team, like I have a couple of copywriters and I, you know, really get to know them and they, they're getting pretty good at sort of writing my style, but I always check it because I want it to feel like it's, you know, really genuine and from me. And, you know, I give them information, they write it, then I check it. And, you know, the other day, like my copywriter was having kind of a bad day and he, he got it a bit off. And I said, I said, Kane, that's his name. I said, Kane, read that out loud. And he read it out loud and it was, you know, some sort of jargony, some sort of, I was like, Kane, could you imagine me sitting in the pub in London saying that shit? I would never say that, dude. I was just, and he was like, oh yeah, it sounds totally weird. I was like, just be normal. Like, how would I talk to you in the pub? Like, I wouldn't be like, hey, Kane, do you want a beer? This is the best beer ever. I'd buy this beer. You want a beer? I'd just be like, hey man, do you want a beer? It's a nice beer. You know, like, you don't have to make, you don't have to make a big deal when you're telling, you know, offering your friend a beer, you know? So it's, right. it was really like, like, don't be yeah. weird. Just be normal. Build <laughs> relationships. It's yeah. not, you know, in the a way, it's easy. It's dude, it's it's so funny because Kane is the nicest guy ever. I love it. Like I love it. whenever I work with Kane, I'm like, this guy is amazing. This guy is wonderful, you know. And but the thing is, all of us, and he's and he's super smart too. And it's like, but the thing is, he's been trained in marketing, just like right. <laughs> that's the problem. It's like whenever we've been trained in marketing, and myself, I had to detox from that stuff for years. I mean, this is why yeah. I started my business in 2009. I didn't figure, not figure out, I'm still figuring it out, but I didn't really enter authentic marketing until 2014, 2015. It took me five years of detoxing from my master's detoxing. of business, you know, and, and marketing traditional training to go, wait a second, just like you said, how would I talk with a friend? You know, how, how, how would I connect heart to heart with another human being that I genuinely like? yeah right and it's like like i saw you today and i just noticed my body kind of open i'm like this is business we're yeah. doing some marketing we're you know yeah. promoting a course but i was like yeah. yeah this is it's not an unpleasant way yeah. to spend time you know it's yeah. not nice. i noticed that in my body like opening when i saw you i was like oh there's george and his dog you know yeah. here's, here's the other interesting one kane is not in the alternative world so he's right. detoxing from marketing Right. But he, can, he doesn't get why a lot of people in, I'd say, our world, because I think we're both in that right. sort of alternative yeah. counterculture yeah. world, he doesn't get some of the hang-ups. Yeah. He's like, but right. money's good. What's wrong with money? I like money. <laughs> He's yes. like, let's make some money. 
And then we also work with Sarah, who's a, also a yoga teacher as well as, you know, because we brought Sarah in because she's more like our people to work with Kay. Yes, yes. And she doesn't have the marketing detoxing. She has the hippie yeah. detoxing. She has like shame about being seen or there'll be. Oh, uh, this is good. This is gold. Uh, so it's almost like two types yes. of toxicity. There's a toxicity from the mainstream marketing world. Right. And then there's a toxicity, you know, she's sort of trying it's to sort so of funny. not be an Instagram clone is what she told me today. She's right. like, and then she has all this stuff about, you know, being seen and don't, she's British as well. She's a British woman and she has like cultural and gender conditioning. Right. About like, don't be seen, don't be pushy. Yeah. Don't say you're too yeah. good. Yeah. So it's really interesting three of us it's really funny because we're all like screwed up in a different it's, way you know it's so funny it's it's like pretty much uh many many uh women and and men around the world are are conditioned that way except for americans <laughs> you know, you know americans. what like, this is so we joyous. americans are like oh what a stand out <laughs> and israelis and israelis so and Israel. we did okay. a thing recently we, we're doing a life purpose day next month right because you know i do different subjects and, doing, and and we said hey who's a great life purpose coach that you know we wanted to get some recommendations from the community yes and and like 10 Americans were like me, I'm brilliant. Me, I'm amazing. Yeah, here's my website. And you can see all the British people just face palming, you know? So, so like this definitely cultural, subcultural. Yeah. Yes. You yes. know, I'm from an Irish family that has a, a certain background. You know, I've got yes. a lot of Israeli friends that has yes. a certain background. That's right. And my That's Russian right. friends, you have, you know, things are very different marketing in Russia. Interesting. Everyone's, everyone's so cynical because of trauma. Oh. Like Russia's a deeply traumatized country. So people are, yeah, are. very, strangers are dangerous. It's like, if you meet someone in San Francisco, you're like, hey, buddy, right. you know, it's nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, in yeah. Russia, it's like, who the fuck are you? So it's like very different marketing. Yeah, very different. So, but, so this whole right. detoxing is so interesting yeah. because I totally agree with you. I think, I think a, lot of, a lot of those watching this, um, we understand the toxicity of the mainstream. But we also are coming to understand, oh, yeah, I do need to have a healthier view of money because we may have some of us came from a kind of a Judeo, you know, Judeo Christian background where money is the root of all evil or that's the original quote that or people think that's the original quote. I have a whole YouTube video on that. <laughs> search, search YouTube on money, root of all evil, George Cow, and you can watch that. But but um, but so some of and then some of us are you know, you know maybe B Buddhist background or or other spiritual backgrounds or the hippie background where it's like, you know, free love, free everything, everything should be free and money. It's like if you're taking money, then you're not really giving, you're not really being heart centered. So that's one of the things. And of course, I've looked at the curriculum for the program you're going to be be um, be selling after the five days. Um, I know you're going to talk about this a little bit in, in the in the free five day training too, but money. Money is a huge thing that the psychology of it, the embodiment of it in a healthy way. So I want you to just kind of touch on this. Like, like yeah. I mean, one of the reasons that you've been able to do so well in marketing, and I think me, me too, and I just want to say briefly, like a lot of people don't know, I have a, an advantage over a lot of the, my, my audience because I grew up in a, in a home where my dad was mm -hmm. a successful business founder he founded a business he became successful in that business so i grew up thinking oh yeah of course money of course we make money of course money making is no big deal and my i'm supposed to make a lot of money or i'm, I'm supposed to be able to make a lot of money i grew up with that training that mindset that it's normal yeah. to make a lot of money and i know a lot of you watching this didn't grow up didn't have that opportunity yeah, didn't that, that, mark what about you did you did you grow up no absolutely not okay, so I, I come from a, a family of sort of teachers and artists there's a few soldiers there in there but okay. nobody is really financially orientated I, so I you're you're actually probably more similar background than, than to i've a gone lot of through a watching. journey with this really have like i was you know i have some as a childhood memory of a guy going in our village I grew up in the countryside in like a Ferrari or something like a red car it was like a nice sports car and my mum just kind of rolled her eyes and went tutted and I remember mm. just in, at that moment and I had no idea who was in that car he could have been the best guy in the world he could have been the worst guy in the world right yeah. but the, the implicit message from that moment was rich people aren't good people and I really, that's, there was a hundred messages like that. And, you know, it comes from Christianity, from Buddhism, it comes from, you know, British culture, but it's also class-based. So I had this very interesting experience lately where um, I, you know, I've come into a little bit of money for the first time in my life. The embodiment conference did, you know, reasonably well. 
And um, that was fascinating in itself because some people were saying, oh, I'm so glad you made some money. And other people were saying, you're, you're a bad person. You've made money. I'm like, what do you mean? We helped half a million people. It was a great event. Like Mark, you, you, you uh, everybody I referred as a teacher to the conference were are, are so grateful that they were. I mean, I, I feel like you've done so much good for. I feel like you've done more good for me than than I could repay you. So no, I, I mean, it's you, a win win. You know, we help the audience, <laughs> we help the speakers, and I help yeah, myself, yeah. and I'm not ashamed yeah. of that. And I, yeah. I feel like if you could engineer a win-win-win, there's a triple win, really, that one, then great. Yeah. But some people were resentful. Some people were jealous. Some, you know, it's, it's really interesting. But anyway, I got a little bit of money for the first, you know, for, you know, I've been in business for a while, doing reasonably well, the body facilitator course, the body yoga principles. But at this point, I went, oh, I should really invest some money rather than just have money. I was, and I, you know, I never grew up thinking of investment. You know, I only grew up thinking you just make just about enough money to survive and any more makes you bad. And I, I thought, who could I ask about this? And I have one cousin who went to a fee paying school. You'd call it a private school. And he went there because his dad was an officer in the military. And so he's, you know, in the military, you often send your kids to fee paying schools because you're, you know, traveling around war zones and stuff. Right. So he's the only member of my family who went to a fee paying school. And I get on pretty well with him, which is always a surprise to the rest of the family because, you know, he must be evil because he's, he's, he works in the city of London. And um, I phoned him up and said, hey, Timothy, how's it going? You know, this is, and, and what I immediately saw was how comfortable he was talking about it. And he had, he's not smarter than me, but he had financial literacy. And he said, okay, interest rates are low and you could get shares and you could buy a house. And his girlfriend's in the background and she likes me too. So she's just like chipping in ideas. And for them, it was just like me talking about the styles of yoga. You know, I'd be like, oh, you could do Hatha yoga, you could do Vinyasa. It was just totally casual. And he was just at ease in his body. And he also knew people. He's like, oh, you should talk to this guy. And it just wasn't a big deal for him. And I was like, shit, I, ne not, I didn't have that education. And even if I had had the education, I didn't have the mindset of that's okay. And it, it's no big deal. And it's just part of life. Like, I don't know, we learn about dating, we learn about whatever. So that was a real moment of truth for me recently, which under, underlined this. And, you know, I always say with the, with the marketing stuff I do, the first job is define marketing in a way which meets your values. You know, like we talked about, it's just about building relationships that may or may not end in sales. That it can be about generosity. It can be a spiritual practice even. You know, it can be um, authenticity is not only not yeah. bad, it's a good thing. People yeah. trust you as the real you. And oh. then you've got to get over some of this money. I call it the inner game is the money stuff. The yeah. outer game is like, you know, learn about sales funnels, learn about Facebook, whatever. Right, right, right. That's so interesting. By the way, I have to I have, want to make sure everyone knows you're not sitting in the bathroom. <laughs> oh, no. So I'm in an Airbnb in Tulum, Mexico. Um, I actually had to move because I had a little bit of gangster problem at the last one. I got threatened, oh. so I had to move in a hurry. Uh, it's okay. It was kind of fun. Uh, I'm, you know, I used to work in war zones, wow. so it was, it was a reminder of my old life. Um, but now I'm in a, a, a nicer place, and it um, unfortunately doesn't have a desk. I didn't check that, so I'm sitting on my bed. And um, yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's good really, Wi-Fi, so I'm, yeah, I'm happy. This crazy life right now. Totally. Um, yeah, the, the, the inner game... I, I love this because if you are, if you can practice becoming comfortable with money and there's this spectrum, obviously there's, 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 um, there's greed on one side and then, you know, greed and manipulation and kind of power, power grabbing on one side. And then on the other side, it's like, oh, I, I avoid money. I, I, I resent people with money. And that's, I, neither side I think is healthy. And it's like, can we come to this this middle middle way where it's like, yeah, money money is a tool to help us fulfill our purpose, fulfill our service in the world. Obviously, give us enough security so that we can, you know, be mentally and emotionally healthy, et cetera, et cetera. But, but um, how is your how is yeah okay so so just Let's go into that a moment, George. This, so yeah yeah yeah. I was getting excited when I talked. Totally, to you. yeah, yeah. And, this, is and this, this is non. I couldn't find decaf, George. So we've got a problem. This is real coffee. <laughs> um, there's no decaf in the supermarket here. So um, people often say money is a form of energy, and I never know what they mean. I think right. it's much more honest to say money is a form of power, right? Mm, and who do you want to have that power? Do yeah. you want to disown that power, or do you want to use that power as a force for good? Right. Right. Yeah. And if we deny it, we just give it to people that have different values. And I, I feel like another way you can look at it is a tantra. 
in the, you know, I have a pretty strong Buddhist education, Theravada Buddhist, mm -hmm. and you could either be in aversion to something or in grasping. Neither is healthy or ignorance, which is ignoring, right? Yes. So yes. the same way you can have a sensation in the body, you can either push it away, you can either grab onto it, or you can try and blank out and disembody and ignore it. The same with money. You can either say, oh my God, I want it and be greedy, right. or but equally to say, I don't do money, I don't do money, that's aversion, that's fighting with reality. And as is ignorance, you know, in Buddhism, ignorance means not being aware. Yeah. So as is just not being aware of like how, and I, I constantly catch myself, like what I was talking to, I now have financial advisors, uh, and I'm getting educated, I'm getting um, input on this. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing it as something to learn, you know, something to school myself in increasingly. And I talked to one, they said, how much money are you going to spend while you're in Mexico? You know, what's your budget? You know, you're staying at hotels and Airbnb. And I went, oh, I don't know. And then, I, and then I realized like, oh, that's a little bit of not wanting to look at the reality of my life for the next month. And I probably get away with it. I'm not broke, you know, but it's like, why did I not say, okay, here's my budget. It's no big deal. Or I'm tracking this and I'm, you know, done, it could be I'm saving money by cooking and not eating out. Or it could be, hey, I'm going to spend loads of money doing yoga every single day, but consciously. Yeah. Well, well it's, it's kind of like, how much are you going to eat today? It, it's, there's something wrong to say, yeah, I'm going to eat a, eat a reasonable amount. It's going to be delicious food, right? But it's not going to, I'm not just, I'm on vacation, so I'm going to eat as, eat, you know, I'm going to eat as much as I possibly can because that's not, that's not healthy. So it, ultimately, it's coming down to this healthy and neutral, right, relationship with money to say, okay, so, so here's, here's a big one that I think a lot of, a lot of sort of uh, holistic or heart-based people mm -hmm. struggle with, receiving the money yeah, oh so, yeah so a, so yeah, it's, yeah. it's it's it, and also also i mean like i said maybe except for some americans receiving attention as well but receiving attention receiving money it's like you know it, it's similar right so it's a, it's a, it's a similar psychological hang up about that but but talk about that a little bit so how can we or what yeah. what is what is going on here what's going on with the, with the receiving side okay Lots, lots you could say here for sure. Like, you know, go into it more in my courses, but yeah. let's say um, part of it's about am I good enough? It's about worthiness, like the Brene yeah, Brown stuff. That's true. Yeah, yeah. So there's a piece around worthiness, like, and equally, if someone says I deserve this much because I'm worth it, that right. equally says other people aren't, right? So that that's a, that is also dangerous. You know, the L'Oreal trap I call that. You know, because I'm worth it. Okay. Uh, you know, L'Oreal have this advertising campaign right, right, because right, I'm right, worth right. it. It's yeah. like, but that says I'm worth it. Someone else isn't. Or it's like, okay, can we take that away from money? You know, the idea of, but equally there's other people who just have a sense of worthlessness. So, so anything which is attention, which is love, which is money, anything coming in, they're going to reject. Right. And you can look at this on a depth psychology point of view. I also just like to look at it very practically. Like, Every time someone gives you money, whether it be PayPal or hands you a dollar or whatever, notice what you do in your body. Do you contract? And can you just a little bit relax, feel your feet? You have some nice practices I've seen on your videos. Whatever works for you, you know, expand and relax is the sort of key somatic piece. Rather than like when you take money out of an ATM, there's a part of me that feels like a thief. And I'm like looking over my shoulder and I'm contracted and I go, yeah, Mark, this is your money. You don't need to be, you're not a thief. Relax, breathe, take the money in your hand, look at it, breathe again, relax your feet into the ground, soften your belly, put it in your pocket, go about your day. And you think if you go to an ATM, like let's say every three days, that's a practice you could do two or three times a week, right? Like every yeah. time you get change even, because it, it doesn't really matter about the amount of money. It's that your system is saying, this is a thing. This is something that I'm being given. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. so I think I think that's in there for some people. They have to do the depth psychology work. For, you know, even asking for money is a practice we do a lot with my students. We say, yes. "Here's my rate," and then we yeah. breathe. Right. We, pra we practice it. We right. practice it. So, like, I, I just asked someone for a massage here, and she actually gave me a little bit of a massage for free, and it was awesome. So I said, "Oh, I'd love to book an hour with you." You know, right. she's fully qualified. Yeah. And she said it would be three hundred Mexican pesos, and I, I looked up, and it's like that's like ten bucks. Yeah. Yeah, I was well, like, that's what people crazy? need to Mexico. <laughs> no, but it's not. It's I mean, it, that's not enough for lunch here. It's not that oh, cheap. Okay, place so so lunch. it's not it's not a living wage there. Yeah, no, it's okay. it's not. And I said, wow. are you crazy? You know, like come on. I mean, I, I, you know, you're a professional, and okay. it's like I, this person clearly needs to just be in the practice of. And she might say, "Hey, you know, I really enjoy it, and I want to be generous," but she knows I'm relatively wealthy. Like we've hung out. 
mm. you know so it, it's like dude i don't mind paying you 50 bucks you know it's like right, right, right. I, like yeah even if the going rate's a bit less than the US, yeah. it's like yeah so so what do you what so so this idea of charging Oh my God, uh, there, I've made a video about charging what you're worth. Uh, but the, most of the people who are watching this, I feel like I, I've noticed two, two, you know, two problems. Like one is some people yep. don't charge enough. And yes. so they might eventually or have already felt resentful about sometimes providing service. But there's other people who maybe they learn the traditional from traditional marketers and they charge more than they probably should at the stage. And then they yeah. feel scared or bad about it. But any thoughts on that? Well, so for me, it's all about freedom. So I always say embodiment's yeah. about awareness and choice. So yeah. I think first thing is notice your pattern. Is your yeah. pattern to undercharge or to right. overcharge because somehow it inflates you and makes you feel good, right? Right. Now, right. I, I look at money. Or, or, or it's, not, it's not that it even makes you feel good. It's almost like you uh, are afraid others don't value you unless you charge a high amount. Status. Like, I've seen that I a think lot. It's, like, status. It's, like, it's like, this is how they don't even realize this is happening. It's like, this is how I build credibility in the minds of right. others by right, through right, the price. Right, right. I'm like, is that really, is that really how you're going to prove to others that you're worth it? So you charge a high price. <laughs> it's like, wow. that's you, a you, you know, I think a third piece there is status. People could feel like yeah. I, you yeah. know, I asked someone right. to do an event for free, which was massively in their benefits, but they was like, I just can't do it. Cause I feel bad. And I'm, and I'm wow. like, but you're going to win from this. Yeah, yeah. And she knew she was going to win, but she yeah. still couldn't do it. Because wow. wow. to her, it was devaluing her somehow. She yeah. got the story that unless yeah. you were paid, you were worthless. Right. Or unless you were paid a center. So for me, it's about the freedom to do both. So I'll give you an example. Every time I go to Russia, I work with three or four audiences. I go to Russia regularly. Uh, Moscow has money, but there are people there who don't. So I work with the gay community for it might maximum 50 bucks for a day. Okay, because it's kind of often quite poor communities, you know, they've identified as we're alternative, therefore we have to be poor. I've actually done workshops for money with gay community in Russia. They've sort of somehow tied being gay to being poor. It's very interesting, actually. Um, I work with the yoga community who have some money. I work with the coaching community who have a bit more money. And I work with the like high end business consultants who have a lot of money. This is like some serious Moscow money. I, I work with oil oligarchs who have more, you know, I charge them a thousand pounds an hour. I mean, they have more money than me and you could imagine, right? You know, they, they, they sort of come in by helicopter kind of thing, you know? So it's, I mean, so it's five groups of people with five different levels of money. And my practice is giving the best value from the heart to all five of those clients. And it's actually, sometimes I notice with the oligarchs, I like, I'm like, you know what, I'm just doing this for money. So I'll just roll out some bullshit. You know, and, and I, or I notice with the sort of poorer clients, like the, my lesbian friends that I work with, yeah, I've worked with them for years. I'm like, you know what? They're not really paying me much. So I'll just give them my second best. I'll, I'll come, I won't sleep properly the night before. I'll party all night and then stumble in five minutes late, you know? And I go, no, the practice is to give from the heart equally to everyone. And I, I got to a point where I pretty much do that. And that feels really liberating. So the price is in no way about my worth. It's simply a practical thing. And then I'm free to make a choice. Not I have to be work with the poor people because it's noble and good, or I have to work with the rich people because I don't value myself, but I can choose to work with the whole spectrum of Russian society, sometimes in one week or one day even. And it feels good in every place. The only thing that changes is how smartly I'm dressed and how smart the training room is. That's the yeah. only thing that changes. Yeah, it's and so interesting. I, I love that. I love yeah. that liberation of that doing so cool. that. The ecosystem works as well. I couldn't right, right. do the charity work without the sort of rich work. Yeah, right? So right. Every time I go there, the ecosystem works. Yeah. Well, this is this is where I say I you know, I tell people give content generously. Be be you know be genuine and generous in your free content, and at the same time, the eighty twenty rule. You know, eighty percent of your content is free, inspirational, helpful, whatever. You know, genuine giving and the 20% make sure you are asking people to say, Hey, join me for this program, hire me for your, you know, for, as, as a coach or facilitator, or, you know, here's my product, you know, it's like 20, 20, 80 rule. Like that's a really, really nice balance just, just to be able to have, uh, well, have people give, support you. Right. Like, like this course next week, it will be the best bite-sized nuggets yeah. I can provide. I'm not going to yeah. be like holding back the good stuff. Yeah. You I know, know, it's I, like I, the best nuggets and then yeah. you're the same tad's the same julius yeah, yeah. the same. all the people yeah. i love in this field are the same and 
I was thinking about this yesterday. I was walking along. I was thinking, what's the kindest business model? That was my starting point. Not what makes the most money or what should I do or, you know, what. And I, the freemium model, I think, is the kindest. And, and here's the interesting thing. It has to be kind to me. Right? So it's kind to the audience because it gives people that don't have the money a lot of great stuff. It's kind to the people that buy because they can build trust yeah. and taste before they buy. You have a coffee date before you go for dinner and you go for dinner before you go to bed, right? There's a, there's a trust building sequence. Um, so it, it's kind to buyers and it's kind to me because it puts me out to a lot of people in a percentage, like, like the conference, for example. Yes. You know, half a million people got it for free and a certain percentage of those bought. Yeah. That's, I, if there is a kind of model, yeah. I would like to know about it. Yeah. I personally yeah. have not seen one. Yes. And, yes. you know, honestly, George, we live in the real world. Like some people say, all your stuff should be free. That's not kind to me. And it's not, no. the word I would use that my community really likes is sustainable. Yeah. It's yeah. not sustainable. It's not, and you know what? It's not kind to other teachers because no, here's the question. the marketplace. Here's the question I want to ask. Do teachers deserve to make a living? All right. right. Let's, People that have skills. that are let, Let's just be honest with that question. Do teachers and facilitators and coaches and mentors and healers deserve to make a living for what they provide? Now, and, and some people might say, no, all healing should be done for free. And you know, there are some spiritual you know, traditions that believe that. And that's okay. If you feel called to that, do it. But if you want to live... I, I think it's a middle way in the modern world where, you know, currency and money is still being exchanged for, 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 for work and for products. Yeah. Do teachers and healers deserve to be paid for their work? And my answer is yes, they do. Now, you know, so, so um, I, I want to make sure people know uh, again about, about, about the five day marketing dojo. So just give me a moment here. I want to share my screen. First, I want to thank, Erica and Lisa and Sarah, Alessandra, there may be other comments that I'm not seeing here, but just you know, live who are here with us right now. And I wanna to go to ethicalmarketing.coach. So it's not .com, but ethicalmarketing.coach is where Mark is doing the five days of free training. So Mark, tell us about this. It's 45 minutes live each day. Um, yeah. 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 I basically, you know, it's, um, you know, all transparency. It's a, it's a funnel into a product. So, well, no, uh, yeah, it's, it's a sample well, of, a of sample. the actual training, which I'm part of you know, that, that the pay training I'm part of. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, I, what I like about this is it's bite-sized. So for people yes. that don't know me yet and want to get a taste for it, like this Facebook, they can get a taste for the style. Cause I have a particular style that doesn't work for everyone. Um, you know, I tend to make a lot of jokes and be quite, you swear and be quite yang and, you know, you have my own version of it. But what people can really get from it is a reframe of what marketing is. And this can be done easily in a week in these four, that you watch even three of these 45 minute sessions, you'll have a completely different view of marketing and one which makes you want to do it. As one of my students said to me, what I learned about marketing from you, Mark, was to do some. OK, but here's why he didn't do some, because he didn't have a view of it that made sense to his values. And this can give you that view. Now, the embodied training, the details, that takes time. But the reframe that having a, a view of marketing aligned with your values is really quick. It's really quick. I just take people through it logically. I've been doing it for years. At the end of it, even at the end of the first session, people go, God, that's a relief. I now actually want to do marketing. And then I give them some of the most fundamental tools because you can study business for years, but the basics are actually fairly straightforward. Yeah. Like the, the, I find myself explaining, I do coaching sessions one-on-one -on -one where people pay me for this. I find myself explaining the same five or 10 things just again and again yep. and again. Yeah, same, I totally agree. Same with you, George. Like, oh, yes. this is a funnel. Yes. This is trust building. This I, is I love this. So marketing is a form of spiritual practice, which I completely agree with. I, I, I think I sometimes say marketing is the process of a business finding its calling because it's continually nice. exploring your own interests and your own experience in, in uh, collaboration with others to see what resonates, what really serves them, which is what our calling is, is that kind of intersection between what, what we can provide and what others really benefit from. So I love that marketing is a form of spiritual practice, day one, difference between Jedi and Sith marketing. Um, number uh, Day two is to find your niche and rock it, uh, awesome. Um, and, and you know, Mark, one of the things I love about you, you're very, you like, you get to the point. 
it's very high value um, what you do, like very, very uh, concise as well. Um, day three, write authentic marketing messages, sell without being cringy, pushy, manipulative, love that. Day four, use social media effectively and ethically, excellent. Day five, collaborate effectively, build win-win relationships and help students. Yeah, and that's you know one of the things that you're superb at is, 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 is doing this, but also, you know, and then, um, so this, I think this, these five days of free trainings will give people a really good taste of what it's like to study with you. And then there's the paid, you know, ethical marketing training with, with all the money stuff. I mean, you have so much in that curriculum. I was, I, I was, I was, I was messaging with you. I was messaging with you. I'm like, Mark, are you sure you want to give all that in the curriculum? <laughs> Cause that's a lot for the pay. I right? just sat down in front of, you know, coaching people and teaching stuff for years. Right. I, I always taught it as part of my other courses. Yeah. You know, at the end of my embodiment coaching or embodiment yeah. yoga and then people kept people were literally giving me standing ovations for the, like yeah, that yeah. bit of the yeah. training and i went okay i need to get in front of a camera and yeah. just download everything I, i'd spent three days just downloading yeah and even the camera crew were like wow this is going to totally change our business at the end of it That's you know amazing. they were just there to film but they so said good. this helped us so much yeah. and for me i can't i, I i'm a giver I like being generous. And yeah. Um, yeah. as I say, this is the kindest model. People can get a taste if they, you know, they'll is get there, good stuff. For those so, who can't make one or more sessions, do they get a recording of it? Yeah, yeah. It's free for 24 hours. So okay, you just cool, stick cool. the email in. They'll get sent yeah. an email every day saying, hey, enough, here's yeah. today's recording. Yeah, and here's yeah. the, you know, depending on, because we have people in different time zones. I mean, this is US and European friendly yes. time zones. Yeah. Um, and, and, and 24 hours is a, is a very good boundary to keep to say, Hey, listen, you're getting, this, you're getting this for free. You know, you're not going to listen to it if it's forever free <laughs> and forever download on your computer or whatever. So 24 hours, give yourself, you know, 45 minutes within the 24 hours to, to watch it, listen to it, et cetera. Is it, is it video? Is it audio? What is it? It's video. Um, so I'm going to be live with a bunch of people on zoom. Okay. So um, if, if people can attend streamed. live, then they can interact a little bit, at least with some questions or interact with each other uh, i think with the zoom is going to be sort of invite only that's kind of okay. and then and then that's broadcast right uh, but right. you know if they want to come to the facebook group and ask you know if they want to come to embodiment cool. unlimited and ask questions we yeah. can take i'll take i'll take on board questions and feedback for sure okay. Okay. um but yeah the, i just find like rather than broadcasting actually being live which at least some people just keeps it human and totally yeah it makes it mo much more fun well anyway ethicalmarketing.coach is the website just like it's spelled here as you can see ethicalmarketing.coach so um i'm gonna i'm gonna try to listen watch all, all of these as well myself because i know i'll learn stuff from it too so mark thank you thank you for uh, well it's a pleasure man it, my people will be listening to this too so i just want to say i just downloaded george's podcast and, and i know a lot of my listeners like the embodiment podcast so there's a another good podcast we had you on twice on my podcast as well so yeah. like i'm going to be walking through the streets of mexico listening listening to your stuff <laughs> I, I always used to joke i always used to listen to you in the bath on youtube right <laughs> and the reason i now this is like it's a joke but it's more than that like the reason i listen to you in the bath is because at the end of the day i'm relaxing i want to learn something but i don't want to be like nothing pushy nothing triggering yeah and i could listen to you in the bath and still be totally relaxed and, and to me that's like now i'm a little bit more coffee than chamomile tea you know <laughs> but that says something about you as a person that i can yeah. feel comfortable in the bath with you you know I, and honored <laughs> so, so it's a kind of a weird way to say it but that yeah. just means i like you i think your work's really good it's chill what you do and it it doesn't it doesn't put me in that like oh my god i've got to buy now some people flight, some people you know? have said they, they listen to me before bed i'm like Mm. So that's not a good, <laughs> good thing or a bad thing but I'm, if i can help people sleep that's great <laughs> take like, it as a combo but i think we're a great combo i think we're yeah, a great combo yeah, we've yeah. got similar values but different yeah. style and, totally. I, and yeah. I love working with people with different style because yeah. you know not everyone's your cup of tea or my cup of tea yeah, right absolutely so this is great um mark thank you for for doing the five-day series thanks for kind of showing up and and giving us and having this conversation together and uh Total pleasure, man. I hope I haven't yeah. talked over you too much. That caffeine really hit in so well. No, no, that was great. That was Total great. Total pleasure. No. It's, it's taco yeah. time here. So um, <laughs> thanks, thanks for your time, George. Cool. Yeah, I'll see you next week for the uh, Marketing Dojo. I'll see you there. Take it All easy. Right. Okay. Bye.